I'm sorry. I, I usually don't put the muffin music on for that long, but... <laughs> Yeah. It's a little bit distracted right there a little I bit. Know, for a I know. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, have you ever known somebody who is a liar? A liar or a, a lawyer? A liar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know a lawyer who is a liar. <laughs> yeah, I know both. Yeah. Anyway, I had a friend when I was a kid, and, uh, or a teenager, I should say, and he was a liar. I mean, never didn't lie. He, it seemed like everything he said was a lie, but everything really wasn't a liar. Uh, but, but you got to the point where you never knew what to believe, and so you decided, okay, I'm just not going to believe anything. Mm-hmm. Why did I stick around? Why did I stick around? Because he was fun. He was happy. He was optimistic, right? And, and when we got older, I, I'll never forget it, Robin. I went into uh, a bar with him. A, well, rest, well, what do you call those things? Taverns, whatever. Yeah. I don't want to paint the picture. It was bad. It wasn't too bad of a place, right? Yeah. It was uh, like when you're a young person. You go to places to meet girls and whatever, right? Right. Well, that's what we were there for. Uh, what did? What do you do for a living? I was asked. I said, oh, I work at the Coliseum. I sweep the floor. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. What do you do? They asked him. Oh, I'm an astronaut. I'm an astronaut. Mm-hmm. And she's believing him. How is yeah. it possible that you ladies believe a guy who looks like he sweeps floors is an astronaut? <laughs> I know. The guy's got to be real charming, right? <laughs> well, you know what? I just don't fall for that stuff. No, well, he, he, well, maybe they weren't. Maybe they were lying. Maybe they're <laughs> pretending to fall for him, right? Uh, All right, on the phone, I apologize. I'm going to put the cover of the book up in a second. I don't have it on the streaming video, but I'll put it there. It's called Once a Liar. It is written by our guest, um, A.F. Brady. She's a licensed mental health counselor and a psychotherapist. And uh, (laughs) I do have a therapist. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So let's find out about the book and uh, the underlying, because this is a novel, right? Yes, But there are some underlying things we might be able to learn from A.F. Brady. Good morning, A.F. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Please call me Alex. Alex, okay. Hey, thank you for being on the show with us. Where are you? I'm in New York. Thank you so much for having me. All right. I love New York. Robert will be up there in about three weeks if you want to wait for her. She's up. <laughs> <laughs> so t- I, I, I grew up in New York, and the, the guy I was talking I this was in New York, the story I was just talking about. This guy had no problem at all telling people whatever he thought they wanted to hear. Yeah, that's a pretty common trait. Really? I'd say so. In my business, I find that it's a pretty common trait. And uh, living in New York, you know, there's there's a certain there's a certain need to kind of fulfill these these um, societal expectations of what you're supposed to be like. And you know, we're, we we've got all these things that we're supposed to live up to. And if we're not really living up to them by certain times in our life, oftentimes we like to embellish a bit and say that we are. Okay, so embellishing and outright lying is kind of two different things, right? So, so did, I agree. So did you take your study of, of human beings with your profession and, and, and weave a story out of that in, in, in creating a psychopath? Yes, most definitely. I took a lot, um, I drew a lot of these, these incidents and personality traits and, and behaviors from my, my career in psychotherapy and, and some people who I've met over the years, both personally and professionally, who are pretty true sociopaths, yeah. So uh, give us a thumbnail sketch of the storyline itself, and then, uh, then I have so many questions about human behavior. Oh, Absolutely. So the book, Once a Liar, follows Peter Kane, who's a criminal defense attorney. Um, he's hell-bent on maintaining his pristine appearance and career status. He's an excellent attorney, obviously, um, and his uh, moral flexibility and incapacity for empathy and remorse make him very well-suited for the business of defending the indefensible. Um, and when the tables turn and he is accused of brutally murdering his ex-mistress, who happens to be the daughter of his professional rival, all of the evidence points to Peter. Um, and so the story asks, will he be able to prove that his cold and calculating exterior is not that of a killer? Um, and can he truly change himself? Or is he too far gone? Oh, oh my gosh. And, and this, th- your ability to write a character that reflects, because we've all known these guys, right? We, we, n- we never want to sure. think we are these guys, though, right? Or do, does the person who is the psychopath recognize himself in the character? Generally, no. Generally, um, you're not going to be able to, somebody who, who is truly diagnosable is not going to be understanding why people are using this word in reference to him. Uh-huh. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, Peter's not a likable guy by any means, but you do love to hate him. 
Oh, really? He's not likable. Okay. So you you said we all did you say we all do this or m- many of us do this? When you say this, what do you mean? Uh, lying. <laughs> do we all <laughs> lie? I mean, I mean, I I would I would be hard pressed to find a single human being who has never told a lie. I think uh, to get out of stuff, to get into stuff, um, we tell some white lies, we embellish some things to be more impressive. Um, you know, getting away with stuff with parents and, and teachers when we're growing up, authority figures. Of course I didn't cheat on that test, even though I didn't study. You mm-hmm. know, whereas bigger lies in adulthood, um, misrepresenting yourself and being an astronaut and not someone who's sleeps <laughs> for is, is okay. a, a, a little bit of a different... Okay. You know, you're, you're doing it for different motivations, and it could be really problematic. Yeah. So here's, the, here's what, something I want to share with you. This is me confessing to... Not to a lie, but to prepare it to lie. I was preparing okay. to lie. Are you ready? I was heading yep. to. I, w- I got out of bed late, and I was heading to work. And I knew I was going to be late getting to work. And there's a train track that crosses the road that I use to go to work. This is a long time ago. There's no. Tr- there's a bridge over that train track now, by the way. <laughs> so I couldn't use this excuse. But I I formulated in my mind that I was going to tell my boss. I got stuck. I got stuck at the stuck stuck at the train tracks, and it was one of those freight trains that took you know an an hour to get by or something. (laughs) So in my mind, I'm rehearsing it. I'm actually saying the words in the car, looking at the rearview mirror at my own reflection once in a while, just to see how do I look saying this. And then I (laughs) and then and then I caught myself. I said, "Wait a minute, I'm practicing a lie. Mm -hmm. That's I don't like that in me." And I actually <laughs> made up my mind that if it came up, why are you late? I'm just going to say I got out of bed late. I, I, I just canned the whole idea of lying. But the point is, for a while there, I was rehearsing it. Does that, sure. Is, do we all do that? I, I, don't, I feel like I don't lie anymore. I really try to be totally honest with everybody. Well, I think that that's also a learning process, that at some point in your life you realize, just as you did, that you don't feel good lying. You don't, it doesn't feel nice to deceive somebody. But what, one of the things that I think you were experiencing in that story is the anticipatory anxiety of getting in trouble yeah. um, at work. And so in order to, you're trying to anticipate a way to get out of the trouble. So, you know, if there's a freight train coming, it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. So you're not going to get in trouble. It's a way to avoid it. So you're lying to to excuse yourself. But then you realize that, you know what? Getting in trouble is going to be better than feeling the way that I feel right now, Um, practicing this lie and knowing I'm going to deceive somebody. So growing up and learning and and becoming sort of the best version of yourself, you stop lying and you realize that it's not worth it and it feels better to tell the truth and suffer the consequences. That is pretty smart, yeah. And uh, you have real-life scenarios uh, in your book. Uh, we'll take Juliet, for example. She wants to have a family, but then she reveals that her parents are probably going to get a divorce, and then, uh, you know, you, you have that kind of emotion playing into also while um, Peter is uh, trying to uh, clear his name. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of side characters and side stories that are important going through um, where Peter is surrounded by a lot of people um, on both sides of the spectrum. Some of whom are really loving, caring, and and wonderful people, and on the other side who are cold and heartless calculating and just, you know, their only drives are based on self-gratification and getting to the proverbial top. And so one of the questions that's asked is a very typical psych question of, you know, is, is sociopathy or anything else that's diagnosable, is it more nature or more nurture? Are you born this way or do you become this way? And the question that I wanted to explore was, if you do become this way, can you unbecome this way? Yeah, can you? I I don't think so. I don't know what your conclusion is, but I know, I mean, there's a few people in my life that, um, I'm not going to name names, but I I know a few people (laughs) who I just don't believe anything anymore, even though they might be telling me the truth. I've been lied to enough times that it makes me say, I don't have, and, and the other part of this, Alex, is that I don't even ask questions anymore because I don't know if I'm going to believe the answer. Mm hmm. 
Right. And, but that's you. So this is you in, in response to this person, which doesn't necessarily mean that the person or the people that you're talking about, they may stop lying. They may realize that this is not good. Look, mm. look at you. You've changed your, your behavior around them. You no longer trust them. It's the boy who cried wolf. You know, eventually, well, nobody's going to care what you're saying anymore. And that doesn't feel good to somebody who's lying. So maybe that kind of negative consequence will be enough for them to change their ways. Mm. And people are so good at hiding their real persona when they want something from somebody else. Absolutely. And that, that is just such, such a, a, a mark of sociopathic behavior right there is to give, you know, to put on various masks as needed in front of different people to become what we perceive that they need from us. What if it's just to look good? Like, like for example, on Facebook, when I take a selfie, I'll hold the camera high so you can't see my fat neck. I'll hold it. Right? I'm lying in a way, right? Everybody who knows me, like Robin, knows, oh, my gosh, you got a fat neck. How come you look so good in that picture? Well, I held the camera really high. Well, it's, it's true, though. I mean, so what, what are we going to be defining as lies here? Is plastic surgery a lie? Oh, there you go. Well... I mean, is I guess, makeup a lie? Are high heels a lie? I guess as long as you, it's obvious, right? I mean, as long as people say, "Oh, you got, f f you know, false eyelashes." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure, but where are we putting it? Are we saying that uh. we're wearing false eyelashes, or are we kind of pretending that we're not? Is Botox <laughs> a lie? I mean, how many times do you see people these days who are seventy-five years old and they look like they're thirty? They look like they're thirty and on a roller coaster all at the same time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny but line. But is that are you like the walking embodiment of dishonesty, or does it count that you are just trying to put your best face forward? Forgive me, I didn't mean to make that happen. Your best face forward. <laughs> um, but or you know, if if I I look better when I'm wearing X, Y, and Z color, so should I wear that color because it makes me look better? Where are the lines that we're going to draw as to what's well, dishonesty and what's just kind of sprucing up? I hear what you're <laughs> saying, but that's not the same thing as the, uh, your character is, is uh, I mean, really lying. I mean, he's... Oh, no, he's just a liar. He's just... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, he's really lying. And that's the kind of lie, I guess, that when, when you run into that... Have you ever seen the TV show Suits? I hope those guys aren't lying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've got the character Marcus in there. I mean, he yes. just likes to trudge forward, and uh, he's pretty amazing. Marcus, Marcus is a Marcus is a master manipulator. Marcus is the the guy who sort of takes Peter under his wing, who has already achieved professional, you know, ma major professional status as a as a criminal defense attorney in New York, and so Marcus takes Peter under his wing, seeing within him these characteristics. Of not a total lack of empathy, but maybe an ability to have that moral flexibility that really, really works in, in criminal defense. You know, so, stuff where you don't quite care about crushing the, the little guy or, you know, doing some of the hor horrible things that, that defense attorneys need to do in order to prove the innocence of their clients, like bringing up the past of their victims, bringing up some dirty, dirty details and things that nobody wants to be exposed. You have to be, you know, your ethical values and your, your empathy levels need to be at a certain place uh, to be able to be okay doing that stuff. And so Marcus saw those kinds of characteristics in Peter and said, hey, if I put this guy in the right environment and I make sure that he understands that those are the traits that need to be built up and we need to work on those and diminish the ones that he, where he cares about people, hmm. then I can build this guy into the best criminal defense attorney that there is. Oh wow! So so observing, as you would be very good at in your in your career, observing somebody's ability to be a skillful liar is actually a tool. Sure. In some situations, it could be a great tool. Think about in in uh, something that's a little bit more. Um, maybe not necessarily noble, but something that's a little more approachable in um, police interrogations. You're going to need to get to the bottom of the truth of whether or not somebody is telling you the truth, whether or not their body language is indicating that something is off. And somebody who has the ability to, to see that is going to be much more adept at their job. But lying 
without being detected can also be super useful in places just like it, just like saying to uh, somebody who you think has committed a crime, saying, you know, your, your wife already sold you out. I already know that you weren't home that night, whereas you don't actually have that information. Oh, yeah. But if you yeah. lie to him, you can get him to confess to something. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, is that legal? I mean, is there a legal line that's being crossed there? No, I, I'm not a lawyer, so we'll, we'll get the lawyers involved on that one. But I think in some cases in in, uh, in interrogations, I think there's a lot of flexibility as to what it is that you're allowed to say. I don't think there's a lot of places where it's illegal to lie unless you're under oath. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can. I can. When they separate two people who have information, but they don't want the other to hear what they're saying about in, in answer to questions from law enforcement, I think that happens a lot of time. They'll say, you know, your 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 partner in the other room didn't tell us that. That's not the same story she told us, and may, maybe yeah. it's not exactly. But so they're not lying, and that's another kind of a manipulative way, isn't it, to to tell a half lie or a half truth. Right, it's planting the seeds, you know, so it's not quite as bad as outright lying to you, but it's planting the seeds of doubt so that you start to sit there and worry, wait a minute, what do you mean it's not the same story? We planned this. <laughs> we planned this on the car ride over, and now she's blowing it. Um, mm. So then you end up saying, no, 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 it was all her, it was all her, which then, of course, you admit that you've just been involved in it. So when you have your patients come to you and you're talking to them and then you're trying to help them get out of this persona of being a liar into somebody trustworthy. When something comes up in their lives and they're trying to tell somebody something that is really true and those people don't believe them, how can they convince the people that they've changed? Their friends and oh, family? that's really, really tough. I think that's up to the person who's, be, who's been lied to to determine whether or not um, they're, they're able to... to begin to believe this person again. Maybe you have to do X number of honest and trusting things for somebody to come back. But so often when, when you find that somebody is just a, a pathological liar or there's no way that you can trust them, you just end up exiting the relationship because it's difficult to, to maintain, to come back and say, all right, you know, here's 30 more chances to tell me the truth. You don't want to put yourself through that. So... I would probably see more frequently that people would be in new relationships where they haven't already burned those bridges. I wonder, uh, I want to comment a little bit on the male-female rela relationship thing, because you, if you listen to women, sometimes they will say, all men are the same, right? If you listen to sure. men, men will say the same thing. All women are the same, right? You get whatever, whatever is the, the rest of that sentence, that's always the beginning. And I, I, yeah. I always will say to any of them, I will say, wait a minute, you don't need all of them. You really only want one. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you're going to find that one who's not the same, that one who doesn't lie, or that one who, do, you know, this there's, there's got to be, be because, and that's the problem with us as as dating creatures is that, um, I mean, unless you're gay and you're, you're dating the same sex as yourself, you're not going to say all oh, men are bad because, well, you're one of them, right? But when, when you're, it's true. Yeah. So I mean, how do I mean, do we, in your observation, do we different, are we different in the way we lie between men and women or, or that we lie? Let me, let me just rewind to the beginning of, of what you said there with the, the um, all women, women saying like all men are the same and, right. and men saying all women are the same. Right. What we tend to do is we tend to choose the same people. So if we choose people who lie to us, we tend to continue to choose people who lie to us. So we end up thinking that everybody is a liar just because we have chosen to be around a number of liars. And this goes back to attachment theory. This goes back to, you know, your, your relationship with your parents and your early relationships in life. And you end up recreating the stuff that happened when you were younger. So, unintentionally, usually. So you go forward and you find things that are recognizable. And if you're used to being lied to, you're going to seek out a liar. You don't want to. You don't mean to. But until you address that, you're not going to be able to see other people. You, you, you recreate the patterns that you understand. So all of us who, who make those complaints That's interesting. are doing it accurately, but incorrectly, if you know what I mean. It does give all of the uh, not-so-good-looking guys an idea. I mean, <laughs> I mean all, all, all we have to do is say, you know, only good-looking guys are liars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's a good way to say it. And I think that the going back to your, your gender-specific lies, um, I think that in a lot of ways that, that stuff is, is uh, cultural. 
Um, so the expectations for what it what it means to be a successful and desirable man, the let's say the Western cultural expectations are to be successful in such way, to dress such way, to look such way. Oh, yeah. So if there are going to be lies to make yourself look more desirable, they'll be along those lines. Whereas women are supposed to have other, you know, we've got other expectations put upon us, so we might lie about those, including well, high heels, makeup. <laughs> okay, oh, and you just, you just reminded me of something. Uh, yeah, women do the high heels, the makeup. Men will take fake money and wrap real money around it, so when they pull the wad out of their pants, out of their pocket, mm-hmm. it looks like they're loaded, but it's really a bunch uh-huh. of paper. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was an amazing scam um, where, uh, because people used to write down phone numbers on pieces of paper as opposed to just putting into the other person's phone, that they had fake ATM receipts with massive, massive uh, numbers on them for the, the checking account balance, and people would have those in their pockets or their wallets, pull those out to write their phone number on the back of it. Oh. Wow. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Wow. <laughs> Are you going to try that? <laughs> I'm going to try that. <laughs> I'm going to try that. That's creative stuff. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, you just re- I, I, I had a conversation with a friend one time. We were at a Burger King, and I said, let's just talk just slightly loud enough so that people can hear us, and let's have a conversation about the jet we need to buy, about, about, <laughs> about all the stuff we need to get in order to get a tax break. And it was it was interesting to watch people kind of cocking their head to one side. Are you listening to these two? P- people were <laughs> yeah. listening to us. Yeah, it was all a lie. It was a big lie, but we weren't hurt, absolutely. But, but people anybody. are fascinated with that kind of thing. Totally fascinated with that kind of thing. That's funny. How do you yourself keep from falling into that trap? Um, well, I think that I've I've you know explored for such a long time because I've been in the mental health field for about eighteen years, and so I've seen the the positives and negatives of of all of these sides of stuff and i try to keep myself as grounded as possible in reality in stability um and i have a you know i'm a, I'm a huge proponent of self-care whatever self-care means to you and, and in in the spirit of mental health awareness month um you know i i think that there's so many again back to the the theme of expectations there's so many expectations put upon each one of us to achieve totally unrealistic levels of perfection in all sorts of areas in our lives that we will feel um, inadequate and disappointed so often that relying back on very basic self-care methods and making sure that you feel okay regularly and checking in with yourself, surrounding yourself with people who support you and make you feel good, those are the kinds of things that I, I do personally to keep myself on, on the level. Well, I, I, I have to apologize a little bit because we kind of monopolized all your time talking about your profession, and we haven't really been fair to the book. So let's kind of get back there before we run out of time. It's called Once a Liar. I mean, it sounds like a fascinating story that is based on a lot of your observations on us human beings. Uh, yeah. And Peter Kane, do we love him or hate him? Sounds like we hate him, huh? <laughs> we love to hate him. We love, love, love to hate him. It's one of those propulsive things where you're flying through the book just to see what happens to him. Oh, my gosh. Is it funny? Um, I mean, I, I consider myself a reasonably funny person, so there's some it's, stuff that's funny in there. I'm just picking up on that a little bit. Okay, so he... And I often thought this, like when you watch these these highly publicized trials like O.J. Simpson's, like how is, the, how is the attorney believing what he's saying? It almost sounds like there's no way you believe what you're saying right now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Is that unfair to say? I, I don't think that's unfair to say. And also, I think that they're... they're, they're job is not necessary. Their job is to ensure that justice is done. And justice is done as in the laws and the legal precedents are followed. Not justice is done like the the guilty man goes to jail. My job is to represent my client to the absolute best of my ability within the limits of the law. Period. Yeah, yeah. And in some cases, we can look from the outside and say, wow, what kind of monster are you to be defending somebody who's done who's clearly guilty of something absolutely horrifying but their job again is to defend their client to the absolute best of their ability and peter makes a real case for himself by saying you know what i'm doing my job that's it everybody out there deserves the best defense that they can get and that's what i'm giving them 
So I want to tell you a skillful lie before we say goodbye. The skillful lie uh -huh. was told by a lawyer, and the lawyer told the truth. But it was a skillful lie because the lawyer was my ex-wife's lawyer. And we were in court. This is like 20. No, this is 30-something years ago. So yeah. it's a very long time ago. And and uh, basically, um, my wife and I were fighting for custody of our son. Um, and long story short, the, 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 it's good news because he grew up to be a wonderful guy. And, and he loves his mom. He loves me. And we both love him. And everything's good. But at that time, yeah. at that time, her lawyer said to the judge, Your Honor, He's in radio. No, he, she's telling the truth, but he hears that to mean he doesn't make much money. Yeah. Well, <sighs> well hello. Her job. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? It's the way she said it was the, the most skillful lie because she told the truth but made him think something different than what the truth was. That's talent right there, and that's you know she's doing her job. She's she's fighting for the rights of her client. I know. And she's fighting to get the client what she's looking for. But how much did you want to punch her? I well no, I don't do that. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but I but, but I, I met her in the street one time. I bumped into her. It was kind of coincidental, and I said, "Let me ask you something. Why did you tell the judge that?" And she said, "Because I'm working for my client." Yeah. That's it. That's the real answer. That was the yeah. truth. That's the answer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, interesting conversation, uh, Alex. Uh, my, by the way, my son's name is Alex. Are you well done. An excellent choice. A-L-E-X? A-L-E-X. But if we're looking you up, it's A-F Brady, right? It is A-F Brady, yes. And my website is afbrady.com, where you can find all my books and interesting tidbits. All right, very good. Very and, and thank you so much. It was a fun conversation, and uh, I apologize. We focus so much on your talent and your, your accomplishments. The book is outstanding, Once a Liar. And this is not your first book. You've got others, right? Yes, I've got uh, The Blind also, which was my first book, came out in September of 2017. And I have an anthology that I worked on called A Thousand Doors, which is a very interesting anthology. And I've got more books coming. Good stuff. Uh, uh, hopefully you'll be back on with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You take care. All right. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Hi, I'm Kate. I became a comfort keeper so I could help care for seniors in my community. I enjoy spending time with them and helping them to live at home. Being a comfort keeper is a rewarding and fulfilling career. Comfort keepers provide non-medical in-home care and companionship for seniors on a full or part-time basis. Call 855-592-0013 to learn how to apply to the comfort keepers team. Do something good for your career and for others. Be a comfort keeper. Comfort keepers offices are independently owned and operated. Here is your one-minute news brief. The Ocala Police Department is reporting that a 76-year-old man died from injuries sustained when he was struck by a car as he attempted to cross Silver Springs Boulevard yesterday near 25th Avenue. The city of Ocala will take over operations of SunTran on July 1st. As part of the takeover, the Transportation Planning Organization will move from 201 Southeast 3rd Street to the Marion County Growth Management Complex at 2710 East Silver Springs Boulevard. Governor Ron DeSantis is moving forward with implementing a law that would